Many people have a misunderstanding of what the different kinds of laptops are, and sometimes even end up buying into the wrong kind. When purchasing a laptop, there are many things to keep in mind in order to make sure that you're buying into exactly what you need. So I would like to compare two of the most popular kinds of laptops, the workstation laptop and an ultrabook. Which one is best for you? Let's find out. Now, this isn't a comparison as to which computer is better than the other. There will be a computer that is a deal breaker for you when compared to the latter. This is only going to help the audience understand the differences between these and to find out which one makes the most sense for different people. First off, I have my Razer Blade 14 which is my choice in the workstation laptop. It qualifies as a workstation laptop due to its quad-core processor and graphics card, though I also picked it because of its form factor. The workstation machine is meant for intensive work such as 3D rendering, video editing, and work that requires powerful hardware, but that you need to be able to take with you on the go. Though, what would be considered a true workstation laptop is one with a workstation grid GPU, such as a Quadro GPU and so forth. I'm counting laptops that could still be purchased easily and are very popular with the general public, that have a quad-core CPU and a graphics card as portable workstation laptops which is how I placed the Razer Blade 14 in this category. My Ultrabook of choice is the Dell XPS 13. What classifies a laptop as an Ultrabook is the size and specifications accompanying it. For instance, an Ultrabook would have a dual-core processor versus a quad-core in a workstation, and usually lacking of a standalone graphics card. Their design is always kept as thin as possible. These laptops are more optimal for light work such as office work, content consumption, very light gaming, and even very light content creation. The physique of a workstation laptop is one that may compromise portability for functionality, though only to an extent. The Razer Blade 14 has a thicker chassis in order to make room for the larger quad-core processor and graphics card. Usually, a workstation laptop will also have more ports than an Ultrabook, though that isn't always the case. This laptop weighs 4.4 pounds, and this is generally about how much workstation laptops will weigh. Still not very heavy, but significant over an Ultrabook. An Ultrabook will usually be much thinner, optimized for portability and leaving heavy work aside. This XPS 13 is very thin and incredibly light, weighing 2.9 pounds. This will be hard to notice in your backpack, though this weight reduction is because of it having a small processor and no dedicated graphics. However, because it supports less powerful hardware, you do get more battery life out of an Ultrabook versus a workstation laptop, generally speaking, that is. The specifications on the Razer Blade 14 are usually the specifications expect from a workstation laptop, though the hardware I'm presenting here is rather old. It still holds up very well today in 2017. It comes with an Intel Core i7-4720HQ, quad-core processor with 2.6GHz, 16GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970M graphics card, and 256GB of solid-state drive storage. Ultrabooks will come with fairly modest hardware. The Ultrabook here, however, also has relatively older hardware, but again, it holds up very well even today. It comes with an Intel Core i5-5200U, dual-core with 2.4GHz, 8GB of RAM, and a 128GB solid-state drive. When it comes to the hinge on an Ultrabook, those usually are a little floppy due to the distribution of weight or lack thereof but a workstation will normally allow for opening it with just one finger, versus most Ultrabooks that will require more support. Expect a harder time opening any 2-in-1 laptop with just one finger, though. Workstation laptops will feature more travel on their keyboards, but for the most part end up being a little louder than Ultrabook keyboards. With an Ultrabook keyboard, you should expect less travel and a more flat experience, but at least it's stealthier in the sense that it won't make as much noise. I'm somebody who for some reason smashes the buttons when typing, so you will get the loudest sound out of these keyboards. Workstation laptops, because of their size, will have a larger trackpad and usually a better quality. Better tracking, easy multiple finger gestures, and more. With Ultrabooks, you get less precision and a smaller trackpad, but this isn't always the case. The force trackpad on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, regardless of whether we talk about the 2015 or the 2016 model, are some of the best in the industry. And this is despite of their Ultrabook form factor. Workstation computers are made especially for performance, to handle tasks such as 3D rendering, video editing, programming, and things of the sort. So normally, you will be getting much greater performance out of your workstation than you would from an Ultrabook. Ultrabooks are built for portability, so Ultrabooks are targeted to light users who constantly have to take their schoolwork or office work on their travels. They will normally perform much worse in a workstation, but are built with premium materials to preserve quality. 
I wanted to go ahead and test both the XPS 13 and Razer Blade 14 in Adobe Premiere. First off, let's start with the Razer Blade 14. Scrubbing through the timeline is pretty smooth, and even handles layers after layers without it slowing down too bad. Keep in mind that this is an older hardware still. The XPS 13 can still handle very, and I mean very light editing, if you can manage to get it to work in the first place, that is. I would never recommend an Ultrabook for video editing, at least with Adobe Premiere because of my personal experiences with it. For those who may not know, I used to edit on an HP Spectre X360, the 13-inch model. It had an Intel Core i7 6500U, dual core with 2.6 GHz and 8 GB of RAM. This is even more powerful, newer hardware than the one from this XPS 13. It was a hit or miss experience, it would handle adding things into the timeline as long as it didn't have to deal with more than a few layers or so. Sometimes it would simply crash. This could have been mostly because of the 8GB of RAM not being sufficient, but having only two cores working on Adobe Premiere didn't help its case either. More times than not, I would get a blue screen, so I can't really bring myself to recommend an Ultrabook for video editing out of personal experience. Gaming on a workstation is easier as well, because of the ample processing power you can expect to be able to play more demanding titles more easily. This specific laptop is marketed as a gaming laptop, though its specifications still match those of a workstation, so you may still consider it such. I play games like Witcher 3 on medium settings with no problems. Gaming on an Ultrabook is a different story. My titles such as Hearthstone, League of Legends, and even CSGO will run just fine. More demanding games will struggle heavily. Gaming is still doable on an Ultrabook, however. There are many things to consider other than just performance, however. The overall benefits of a workstation is being able to carry your creative or professional work with you anywhere you need to go, without really compromising on the performance you would get if you owned a more powerful desktop. The benefits of owning an Ultrabook, however, is that it is much easier to carry around, fits in almost any bag you want, and even just having the benefit to carry all of your work to class and back makes an Ultrabook a great choice. Another thing to consider is the price in comparison to a workstation computers. They usually go for almost as low as half the price of a workstation. Here's my conclusion on the workstation side of things. A laptop of this caliber makes sense for people who are doing any kind of creative work, video editing, 3D rendering, and more but need to take their work with them. Unless you're doing intensive tasks like this, it may not be the best option for you. They normally cost more, especially with portability in mind, and for a lot of people, it's even much more than what they need. Overall, you're still looking into great performance with a workstation laptop. And now, here's my conclusion on Ultrabooks. If you're a light user who really just needs a laptop for office user schoolwork, even just constant consumption, then an Ultrabook is what you're looking for. Ultrabooks are thinner, lighter, and generally more convenient than a workstation. Now that I've reached my consensus, I hope this video helped anyone decide which machine they should get. Personally, a workstation laptop makes the most sense to me because of the sort of work I do. If it wasn't for that, I'd still own an Ultrabook today. A few decent workstation laptops would be the Razer Blade 14, MacBook Pro 15 inch, and the Dell XPS 15. These are great options if you're looking for top-of-the-line build quality and performance out of your machine. There are other great options such as the Asus ZenBook 15 inch and the Gigabyte Aero 14 if you're looking for something more affordable, that is. But all of the machines here will perform very well. If you're looking for an Ultrabook, there are awesome options from the same brands I mentioned. There's the MacBook Pro 13-inch, Dell XPS 13, Razer Blade Stealth, Surface Book, and more. These Ultrabooks are still some of the best in their class and would be happy recommending any of these. To learn more about some of the laptops mentioned, we made reviews on the Razer Blade 14, 2015, MacBook Pro 15-inch the 2015 model, and the Dell XPS 13 for Ultrabooks, as well as the HP Spectre X360, and MacBook Pro 13-inch 2016 with a touch bar. Everything will be in the description. And by all means, if there is anything I missed, make sure to let me know in the comments section. I would be happy to receive feedback on this video so I can do a better job at informing others. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we upload tech videos like this one regularly. For everything mentioned in this video, you will find links in the description. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all next time. Enjoy!